Hi everyone. So today we have a Senate um, prediction between the Democrats who have 30, 23 seats and the Republicans who have 42, um, including all their safe states. The Democrats have 38 seats and the Republicans have 46. So starting off, we're going to go through um, some of the likely states for the Democrats. So New Jersey is a state that's pretty likely to go to Bob Menendez, staying with its Democratic identity. I understand many people are energized that Bob Hugan could win and he does have a shot, but at the moment, Bob Menendez the favorite to win in New Jersey. Um, going over to Michigan, um, that's a state really the Republican doesn't really have much of a shot in Michigan. Um, Debbie Stab now very, very likely to win there. Same thing over in Wisconsin. Tammy Baldwin, not very um, unlikely that the Republican will unseat her. Um, her approval rating is on the rise there in Wisconsin. Um, going down to the state of West Virginia. So West Virginia, I'm not going to characterize as it's likely or leaning, so I will come back to it. But um, going now going into some of the likely Republican states. So a likely Republican seat, Mississippi special election. Cindy Hyde-Smith staying with its Republican identity, definitely going to win in Mississippi. Um, and that's pretty much the only likely Republican state. Now for some of the leaning Democratic states. I'll actually start off with the leaning Republican states. Um, a leaning Republican state, the, oh, sorry about that. A leaning Republican state would be the state of Texas. So Texas is a very interesting race. Beto O'Rourke, the Democrat, has a very, very positive approval rating, much better than incumbent Republican Ted Cruz. However, Beto O'Rourke does not have the name recognition that Ted Cruz has built up through this, through his time as senator. Um, and Beto O'Rourke has a lot of energy on his side, but it'll be close. But I don't think it's enough to win over, win him over this specific seat. Um, another state that I see leaning to, towards the Republicans, the state of North Dakota. Kevin Cramer is a pretty popular representative from the state of North Dakota. And Heidi Heitkamp is a Democrat that in a state that overwhelmingly votes Republican. Um, so that's why I see Heidi Heitkamp actually losing her re-election, which is pretty surprising in what could be characterized as a Democrat wave year. Some of the states that I would find in between likely and leaning for the Democrats, I would say those states would be Montana and West Virginia. These states went overwhelmingly for Trump. However, the Republicans in these states don't really have much name recognition and the Democrats here are pretty popular um, in their home states. I will leave actually West Virginia as likely going to go to um, Joe Manchin, but really you could make an argument saying it could be leaning or likely for Joe Manchin. Um, going over to Montana though, it's a state that went pretty, pretty much for Trump. Um, but I will leave it narrowly in the leaning Democrat direction. But you could make an argument either leaning or likely. Sorry about that. I'll leave it as leaning for now. Um, going over to the state of Nevada, another state leaning for the Democrats, the incumbent Republican Dean Heller quite unpopular in his home state, has a negative approval rating, and Jackie Rosen, a popular representative from the 3rd District. Um, definitely, I would be quite surprised if Dean Heller was actually able to maintain his seat. Um, in Arizona, again, this is a state that um, is getting more Democrat Democratic every year. I would be quite surprised if Martha McSally was actually able to win here. Kristen Cinema is ahead in every poll um, other than the Republican polls. And even in the Republican polls, um, they even show a narrow cinnamon lead. Um, 
Now, we have many races in the um, heartland of the country, just below it, actually. Missouri, Tennessee, Indiana, Ohio. Um, but first, I'm going to go down to Florida, and I'm going to call it for Bill Nelson at this point. I know that Rick Scott might be ahead in opinion polls. However, this is not a Republican wave yet, and I've explained this in one of my comments in um, a previous re video that um, I posted um, just like an hour or so ago. Um, now, here's the thing with Rick Scott. He narrowly edged out his elections in two Republican wave years. 2010, Republican wave year, they were able to take the House of Representatives after the Democrats had won it in 2006 and 2008 by wave margins. And now the Republicans were able to take control of the House in 2010. Rick Scott won his election in 2010 by 1.2%. He should have won it by 5% in a swing state like Florida. 1.2%, he might have won it in a Democratic state like Michigan or Minnesota or, you know, these other, or Virginia or whatever. Um, but 1.2% in a swing state like Florida that might even lean ever so slightly in a Republican direction and in a GOP wave year, he was able to win by 1.2%. That's not very good. Um, in the year 2014, Rick Scott was able to win by 1% um, in a GOP wave year. And that, that in that year, they were able to take a lot of Senate seats away from the Democrats. Um, and Rick Scott was only narrowly able to edge out the governorship against Charlie Crist. And um, Charlie Crist wasn't really all that popular. Bill Nelson much more popular than Charlie Crist. And, um, and I definitely see you could probably, probably even make the case it might even be a likely Democratic seat. But I'm not going to stretch it too far because many people think that Rick Scott will win, but I really can't see that happening. So the next state I'm going to go to is the state of Ohio. So Sherry Brown is extremely likely to win re-election. I would see that as a likely Democratic seat. Really not really much possibility of a Jim Renacci victory there in Ohio. Um, going over to the state of Tennessee, this is a state leaning Democratic now. The reasoning why is that Phil Bredesen won his election in 2006 as a governor, in, um, which, by the way, was a Democratic wave year, but not by a ridiculous amount. Um, he was able to win every single county. And, by the way, he was even able to narrowly edge out his election bid in a Republican wave year, that is 2002, which was a Republican wave year. He was able to narrowly edge out his first election, which, by the way, is just his first election. This is his third statewide election, and he's already built up that base of independents who support him. Independents and Democrats are his main uh, main supporters. Even some moderate Republicans support Phil Bredesen. Um, uh, quite a moderate Democrat, not really. He said that he would do it for whatever was best for the state of Tennessee, not really if it's Democratic or Republican, so that could get him a bit of crossover appeal. Um, but the final two states to decide is Indiana and Missouri. Democrats need to win both of them in order to take the Senate. Um, actually, there's Miss, Miss Minnesota special election. Um, sorry about that. But I definitely see that as likely Democratic not really much of a possibility that the Republican Karen Housley, um, a state senator, could really win over Tina Smith, the, Repub the incumbent. Um, so Democrats need to win both Indiana and Missouri in order to um, take control of the Senate, and Republicans just need one of them. So with the state of Missouri, Clay McCaskill is ahead in most opinion polling. Um, however... She has gotten very lucky in her primaries, uh, in her um, general election bids. Um, but again, I still narrowly see this one ending up in the McCaskill column. However, in the state of Indiana, 
Mike Braun, um, first of all, the um, Democrat Joe Donnelly was just elected in 2012, I believe, and that was only because of a weak Republican opponent. Mike Braun now is, um, you know, a more Trump style, um, more Trump style Republican, um, a businessman, I believe. And um, Mike Pence would definitely help him in the state of Indiana. He would get that Trump vote because of his, him being, you know, Mike Mike Braun, the businessman guy. And he will also get that conservative ideals vote with the help of Mike Pence, the sort of more conservative guy. Um, and Joe Donnelly, not extremely popular in the state of Indiana, Um uh, and this is, I could see, getting very close. But at the end of the day, I see this one flipping over to the Republicans and Mike Braun would be the victor in the state of Indiana. So final Senate makeup. Let's go over here. 50 Republicans and 50 Democrats. You can see the current composition like that. And then you can also see um, what I think could be the new composition. So <clears throat> you can see a few changes. Some places down in the south are um, getting more blue. Arizona is now um, shaded and Nevada is now deep blue. Um, and then we also have a few other states. So North Dakota, this entire red wall is complete. And um, Clay McCaskill narrowly able to hold on in the state of Missouri. Um, and then in the Rust Belt, you can see what I what I find interesting about this is that many of these Rust Belt states, they're shaded. And I think that what that's saying is that these Rust Belt voters are not very partisan voters. They don't vote down the ballot. Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia are all shaded. And then Michigan now has two Democratic senators. Indiana, which is very close, could have even been um, shaded, has two, two Republican senators now. So thanks for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.